So the other day someone was asking me what tequila means and I was like it's a name and then yesterday or so I just saw the person's comment again and they were like tequila is a form of lying that Muslims use to get people to loathe their God to take over a country. Everywhere Muslims go they bring death and destruction. Never trust a Muslim. It was just oh my god I'm, I'm done reading this sentence like yeesh. <laughs> Okay, I just woke up, it's Monday, I woke up with a headache which I absolutely freaking hate, it's so annoying, but we didn't do last week's Q&A, and we're gonna do that now, because a promise is a promise. Okay, so let's see, I got, well I went through it, and I got about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 questions, and uh, I, I really liked the last video even though I touched on a very polarizing topic a lot of people were having nice and civil and healthy discussions which was really which was really really appreciated I really liked that it wasn't the dumpster fire that it was last year I think maybe because this year we all know each other more or um, my audience is more involved instead of just random people but yeah I'm actually in last week's video was really well received and i love it so much so let's get into this week's questions okay starting off simple lapis lazuli says something that is haram is a sin right and to that yes yeah, something that is a sin is haram and something that is haram is a sin they're basically the same word in arabic so to say so like i said drinking alcohol you know out of wedlock sex incest i don't know why i keep using incest um killing cheating people like there's a lot of big things and a lot of little things that are also i'm like lying in a sense is haram because it's a sin but some people tell you no if you lie for the good reason and i'm like there is no good reason to lie a lie is a lie regardless of what your intentions are but yeah, anytime a Muslim says haram, just know they mean it is a sin for them to do, like eating pork. <laughs> it was a perfect illusion asked, how is my family doing this Ramadan? And we're cool, we're chill. It is... Oh wait, wait, let me check. I actually recorded this this morning, I can't believe I forgot so quickly. Today is the 19th day, if by sunset today we would have completed the 19th. 19th day of um, Ramadan of fasting and everything is good it's the only thing is I have severely lost a lot of weight I am terrified like I look in the mirror and I can see well I've always been able to see my ribcage but my collarbone everything above my boob area I can see the bones there and it's so unattractive and scary and ugh, I'm just terrified like I'm losing so much weight it's so scary electro cute asked a question they thought they were being disrespectful though but they were not but they were asking me what is my view on hijab and if I wear it to begin with so I don't know if they asked this question before they watched last week's video or they just didn't understand it because I was rambling for too long but they also said it here where they feel a woman wearing a hijab or anything that covers her head is looks super sophisticated and attractive which is also something that a lot of people attribute to like covering the hair and everything is just this level of maturity but to reiterate my views on the hijab is everybody has their reasons for wearing it and I just want people to be more informed as to why they wear it not just because they wear it because they were told to do so like if your dad tells you to cover up and you do so and you don't even know why guess what you're covering up because of your dad not because of your religion or something like that along those lines and again I personally do not wear the hijab I wear a veil or sometimes I go hair open but that's when I do up my hair so then you don't actually see my hair <laughs> like i said it's hard to explain but you have to wear a hijab when you pray that's actually common knowledge i remember that fight i had with that person who was like so if there's nobody around you can pray without your hijab. like no you pray with your hijab that's like a law but i'm just saying 
walking out with it and doing all that stuff it depends from person to person and i don't want to put any of my negative thoughts or feelings out there about it because of what i have experienced because of it but my views on it are neither positive nor negative like i said it depends on the person i come into contact with and i don't wear the hijab when i go out i very rarely wear it unless maybe i'm going to the marketplace with my mom and i just don't want to dress up and even then i don't put the hood of it i just put it around my neck like a fashion type thing and then i still wear the veil the hijab is basically there to just cover my physical form but other times i can just go to the market however it depends on how dangerous the security level is around that time of week or month how likely it is people are gonna steal from you <laughs> ghost fox again asked another question which was very interesting they were they were asking what are some of the weirder traditional aspects about the muslim religion and then they said something about christians drinking the blood of one of their prophets and eat his body so i was like is he talking of the blood of jesus or something else and i just got so confused because i know the blood of jesus is something christians say when they're scared or terrified but i didn't know it was something that they actually drank or am I just confusing one thing for the other but when you're asking weird traditions that we do how can I say this because it's me I don't see it as weird so I cannot quantify what is weird because it is normal to me it's a tradition but I don't know during goat meat is kind of sacred I don't really know during Salah you're supposed to slay a goat or ram more, more preferably uh, I'm actually trying to think of something that's weird because I know somebody else can point out 10 million things but I cannot even think of one because tradition I don't think tradition follows Islam I believe tradition more follows your culture and your tribe because if you ask me okay my tribe do we have any weird traditions I can name a couple like a couple like for one like I said I'm Hausa if we're getting married or if I'm gonna get married it's my it's my family my side of the family the bride's family that will furnish her marital home like maybe who you're gonna marry buys the shell of the house but my family will be the one to buy the furniture the bed the everything other tribes is different so there are different things for different tribes so I believe tradition follows more tribes than religion then and there are also more weird superstitions like I remember when I was growing up they said if your mom hits you with the broomstick it's like you're not gonna get married or something if you're lying on the ground and somebody crosses over you somebody crosses over you or walks over you then you're gonna give birth to a child that looks like them so more <laughs> weird superstitions and stuff like that than traditions I am just blathering this headache I hope I'm making sense at least um, a couple people were asking give me an example of supernatural activity and I was like oh god what what did I get myself into because I have so many things I want to say but I don't want to risk sounding like a lunatic and even last night as I was lying in my bed I was thinking okay there are some things I want to say but I am legitimately terrified because I don't know if I say it and I'll live to see the next day <laughs> because there's a reason why there's some levels of super supernatural stuff that you're not allowed to talk about I think but here's the thing during Ramadan season us Muslims believe like we're safe it's the safest month of the year all the spirits all the evil happenings is like God ties them up and puts them in a corner because that's why we say it's the holy month so Technically, there are no spirits around right now, so I should be at liberty to speak But I don't want to because when they come back after Ramadan and hear what I have to say I want to still live and I could recommend movies that Show all these supernatural things like what we think about but at the end of the day. Yeah, it's just movies Who's gonna believe a movie? so it's really complicated and I don't and again I don't want to risk sounding like I'm freaking mad woman so I'm like thinking okay 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 what do I do what do I do what do I do so I can just give one story for now because it didn't have anything to do with me um, there was this girl or should I say there are two girls back when I was in secondary school that were possessed so basic 
gist of possession is spirits possess you they can possess a man but they are more likely to possess women because I don't know we're weak willed or something like that and they mostly come if you don't cover your hair and you know all those henna tattoos that we well us here in Africa we do it a lot they say they can enter through that as well so there are different points of entry but mostly it's lack of covering of hair but when I was a kid I noticed it, they entered a lot of younger girls and a lot of pretty girls so I had two friends who were possessed one of them claimed that her own spirit was not evil and throughout my whole secondary school I never saw an episode from her she was really cool sometimes she says that she can be sitting in a room alone she hasn't prayed and then she'll hear a loud voice from nowhere screaming at her to go and pray so that's why they're like yeah her own spirit is good but this other girl not so much and I went to the same primary school at her her name is Asma'u the one with the good spirit her name is Aisha so Asma U has had two episodes. She had one in our equivalent, your equivalent of seventh grade and eighth grade. I hope it's the same girl. I think it is. And I think she was kicked out of the school. She wasn't allowed to do ninth grade because of her episodes or something along those lines. So in first grade, I, um, in seventh grade, I remember that it happened in the middle of geography class or biology class or something like that, and everybody just spilled out of the classroom it was like I've never seen it happen before so as a kid I didn't know why we were all running and even the teacher a grown-ass man bolted through the front of the class and all of us that were behind her had to run through the back of the class and then after a while she calmed down and we all came back and in seventh eighth grade sorry I have to switch my brain around to American style school system so eighth grade was it? Yeah, 8th grade. Uh, sorry. 8th grade. She had another episode, but this time I didn't run away because somebody was poking fun at her, teasing her for our school, and then the spirit kind of like took over. And the girl, I think, it was trying to protect her from the bully or something, and then everybody just bolted from the class again. I think the teacher hadn't even come in this time. And I was just sitting on my seat, I wasn't moving, and everyone was like, Faiza, are you an idiot? And I was like, I didn't upset her, so why would the spirit come after me? And I know what you're thinking. A lot of people would think, okay, maybe she has multiple personality disorder, but this is a small ass girl having, you know that kind of double voice thing from him? In Pop of Girls or all those kind of supernatural movies where you see one person have two voices or have a completely different voice and even now as a grown-ass woman I'm like why the hell did I not run that day even I don't understand it so when I asked her I said hey how does this thing work for you she says like she kind of just blacks out maybe she gets angry or she gets emotional and next thing everything goes black and after sometimes it can happen for eight hours sometimes it can happen for an hour and then she comes back and then people tell her what it is that she did and I was like that's borderline terrifying but again I'm sure Americans Americans have an explanation for every goddamn thing they can say it can be an episode they can say it's her other personality taking over but some men also get possessed and I think I don't know if this was how can I say this it could have been a lie it could have been the truth it could have been whatever but it happens so one of the gate men we have I hope I don't have to explain that, but it's one of the people who guard our house at night. When I was a kid, I was informed he had a spirit possess him, but it was a female spirit. So when it takes over him, his voice changes to a feminine one. And I was like, okay. So it's kind of hard to explain a small ass girl, maybe if she's possessed by a male spirit having this deep ass voice when her episodes come in and having this grown ass man having this feminine as all hell voice when his episode kicks in and that's just the bare minimum of what I can explain when it comes to supernatural activity like listen listen you can think I'm insane you can think I'm crazy you can, you can think I lose my I've lost my goddamn mind but the thing about it is at a point in my own life I also had that thought of I believed supernatural activity existed 
but I've never had it personally happen to me or come in contact with me so you always have that level of doubt even though I was here even though I see what happens I still had that level of doubt but around last year beginning last year or to or ending 2016 something happened no it was last year something happened that took me three days to process it was it was mind rape and I will never I can never undo or unsee or unexperience it and it yeah showed me we are not alone on this earth there are things that we cannot see we do not see and we are not supposed to talk about but yeah I know I know this is vague as all hell but I have to actually ask to know if I can talk about this shit so I'm gonna ask um, I'm gonna ask my boyfriend Jay cuz it kind of happened with us together I'm gonna see if I can talk about it so if I can I will bring it up next week but if I can't I'm not going to cuz I like being alive <laughs> but that's all I'm gonna talk about supernatural stuff if it entertains you I, I'm happy if you want some references on movies I'm talking about that have supernatural ish so you can understand how our African mindset works I would be happy to give any and all references because the other day I was watching Lion King again and I saw Rafiki and I realized oh dang because he is the typical African spiritualist or is a ritualist whichever one you prefer and that's how they act like you see Rafiki taking all these paints and rubbing it on there they communicate with stuff that we can see and there are people like that in Africa real life people some people will go to a ritualist and pay them a lot of money and say hey I want to get rich and they will tell you bring me the head of three chickens um, two white goats and the leg of a baby some will tell you okay because the way spirituality I guess works in where I come from is us in the north we tend to do well, let's say rituals and stuff like that for mostly women who do it because they have maybe maybe their husband has more than one wife they're the third wife or they're the first first wife and they want to have control over their husband so they go and pay all this ritualist money to make them the most loved wife to make them the one with all the power in the household basically they do it for love or to control their husbands but in the south, there's a whole nother ballgame. Those people go ham when it comes to witchcraft. Like, I've heard stories where they say a woman turned into a snake. Even my college roommate, the one that was a Catholic Christian, she would tell you where she comes from, that there is this huge as all hell snake that runs through the village, and you would be suicidal to try and kill that snake. That people, crusaders of Christ, have come to try and kill the snake, and the snake has ended up like maybe destroying their whole family and generation so people in her village just have collectively agreed to leave that snake alone and apparently the snake sometimes guards the people of the village like a mom can go to the marketplace and leave her baby and she'll come back and see the snake curled around it like protecting it like I don't know what is going on in the east and the south but it is terrifying <laughs> so southern women tend to do more deep as all hell witchcraft which again is explained in a lot of the movies we have and I get I'm getting this kind of information that in America or in the UK there are good witches like Wiccan there is no good witch over here witches here drink and eat you I remember again sorry I know this segment is really long but I think is what will interest people the most um, my mom was giving me the story and she said it happened to somebody where witches targeted him his blood or his organs or something and in the night he was crying he was in pain he felt like he was being eaten alive and that they took him to the hospital and when they opened him up he was full of cotton balls and i was just looking at my mom and she was like yeah i didn't even want to know if she was there in the physical if she was if she was also being told and i was legit terrified of that for three years because when I was in my teenage phase, I also came across one of the bad witches. I have come across a lot of supernatural stuff, come to think of it. I'm, I'm, I'm surprised I'm still alive. But the idea of people feasting on you, drinking your blood, and then replacing it with cotton balls, 
ah yeah i know i haven't convinced anybody and somebody out there must be thinking this girl is insane but hey what can what can you do i'm just telling the truth and what i see if you want extra detail if you want the list of movies comment it below i'll happily give you one just the other week me and my mom were watching a house a movie of a girl who got possessed and could see chickens for some reason where other people couldn't and whenever she was given a chicken to eat she gets visions of the truth so like if they stole something from somebody the person would be like here eat this chicken she would eat it and then she knows who the thief was what they stole and where they hid it it was very interesting i'm not gonna lie never seen that premise before and <sighs> moving on from smurf and michael chaff 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 chaffer this is a question um liwa39110 said asked whereas last week i said that the whole the whole universe how we came together is so it was it, it was so intricate that it had to have had divine intervention they asked me how have i come to that conclusion and well it's kind of hard to say again because whereas yeah i like to ask questions and i like to dig deep there are some places where i just stop myself and i say you know what just have a little faith because that is what your religion is at the end of the day faith so Sometimes I physically stop myself from asking a bunch of questions because I feel okay Why am I trying to justify so many things and trying to get so many answers because of maybe other people from the outside coming in and attacking me for my religion and I feel like I have to have all the answers but again sometimes I feel like you know what there's nothing wrong with having a little faith there's nothing wrong with believing look the this other day I was looking at my fingers and all the crevices and lines and intricacies and I'm like how 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 did we reach this point how did evolution evolve so effortlessly that everything is the way it is everything works so perfectly because even in the Quran it says nothing on earth is useless and I remember when I was a kid I'll be like oh my god bugs are useless oh my god spiders are useless and they'll be like no some animals feed on them which other animals feed on them to our own the animals we eat feeding on them to us feeding on them kind of like the circle of life i guess but in terms of the whole universe design thing i remember a video i watched one of these scientific type videos where they were talking about if, if aliens existed or not and they were like well if the universe is as big as it is and is as old as it is with everything how come there is no life anywhere else how can we be alone in this cosmic universe that it's physically impossible and when you see all these other scientists explore other all these other planets there's no sign of life on any of them and some of these planets have been around far longer than Earth. Some of them have been around in Goldilocks zones of their own solar system or their own galaxies. But some scientists say, well, okay, it's too far away for us to know if it has life or not. And yeah, you also have to take into account light years because when you're looking at something in space, you're not seeing it in real time. You're seeing it in the past. But still, it's just so weird that we haven't come into contact with anything after all out of all the radio signals after all the signs nothing has been received and other scientists argue that well maybe it hasn't reached the people yet or maybe our technology is so primitive that whatever race it is cannot even receive it and then another in the same video it argued what if a sort of radio silence was issued and these other beings can see us but they're not allowed to communicate with us and i'm like yes they're called spirits they are around us <laughs> everywhere but they are not allowed to talk to us that's also like explained in religion and stuff like that there's not supposed to be this type of communication they can see us but we can't see them and no communication is supposed to happen yeah and also, I guess you asked me if I believed in aliens or not. 
which I just feel like yeah that's just an that's just another way to say spirits I don't know why everything I'm just saying it's spirits but trust me that thing that happened last year really effed me up and I'm just like everything is them I do not believe any other answers leave me the hell alone <laughs> And yeah, uh, on to our final question. God, this video is super long. It's from Shank X, the man, the myth, the legend, the person that really opened up a big chunk of my critical thinking as a Muslim last year because I did not expect any of the questions I got from them and they did not want to ask me questions this year because they were afraid of my reaction and I was like, okay, look, if I can get at least one serious question, I'm cool with it to just ask I'm not really mad at you or anything it was I think the kind of debate that was sparked last year that was more of what drained me than you as a person so thank you for asking your question and Shank X asked how do you feel about atheists being jailed and killed for apostasy in Middle Eastern countries and some African ones oh my god what that's actually a thing really well if you think about it if you think about it back in ye olde times the jews killed the christians when the christians first came into existence the christians killed the muslims when the muslims first came into existence so maybe it's the same thing like the muslims are killing the atheists now that they're coming into existence or they're more widespread you can see it from that point of view i'm not justifying it but you can see the train there but i i feel I could give you a very well-researched answer but like I said this whole Ramadan period I'm trying to give more of my own personal views so people can understand me and how I see things instead of me giving a more researched answer and it sounding fake as all hell and so unattached so I feel the reason why they jail and kill them is because they are well afraid of them because I'm not going to speak from how can I say this? The Middle Eastern standpoint, but I think there's this kind of fear that comes from somebody who doesn't believe in God, because it's like, okay, then what do they believe in? Okay, do they practice witchcraft? Okay, are they evil? Okay, how can you not believe in God when everything points to His existence? Everything is there that shows there is a divine Creator, and for you not to accept that or believe that, it's sort of blasphemy. And then they jail you but I don't see any logical reason as to why they will kill you that's a really backwards place I'm sure you're talking of all those places with extremists and stuff like that because I don't see any developed place where you would get killed for that and even if you're an atheist and you're living in those kind of places you places you do not say you are one like damn like I said in another video where we had our first gay man and they got jailed I said he is the first but I'm sure he's not like physically the first. He's not the first person to come out. Like there are a lot of politicians who you hear them have scandals with little boys or something like that. And they swiftly cover it up. Because you do not come out and say you are something in a place that heavily does not allow it. You are just setting yourself up for failure. And I get the idea of I don't want to let this thing control me. But do you want to live? Do you want to live though? That's a huge, that's a question. Because anywhere other than america it's very deadly to be your true self let's be honest even in america now it's deadly to be your true self everywhere in the world is effed up nowhere is safe everything is chaos it is the end time the world is coming to an end Ugh. but i feel really really sad about that you shouldn't jail someone for their beliefs you shouldn't kill them for their belief that's the same thing as it was back in the day you are jailing and killing people because they believe in a different religion than you you're jailing and killing people because they think differently than you and that's just really sad and di dictatorial dictatorial dictatorship i i know there's a word that has a dictator thing in it but i just can't think of it right now and uh, this video is over 30 minutes long i doubt anyone will listen to this thing in its, in its entirety i highly highly doubt it oh my god but yeah that's all the questions we have thank you to any and everybody who has watched i have no idea how i'm gonna title this video i think i'll just pick out 
a single word from each question and we'll just slap it all together <laughs> but yeah next week is the last hopefully maybe we'll see Q- Ramadan Q&A because this everyone is speculating this Ramadan will be 29 days but I'm not that narcissistic if it's 30 days it's 30 days if it's 29 days it's 29 days like i've explained it runs on a lunar calendar so if it's 29 days next fridays will be the last ramadan q a so last chance to bring in all your questions even if it's 30 days that thursday will be on a friday so i don't know i think i'll just make the next one the last one because four is a good number it's a good number for a month <laughs> so last chance to throw in your questions if you don't till next year if we live that long of course but but thank you all so much for clicking to watch thank you all for anybody who stayed this long i need to go shower i need to go lie down i can't eat or drink water and i'm i'm really tired i need to be in front of something cold <laughs> but yeah thanks so much for clicking to watch this is tvc signing out